guys welcome back in today's video I'm gonna share a staple Trini breakfast dish which is tomatoes and saltfish along with fry bake and you don't have to eat tomatoes and saltfish with fried bake you can have it with roti with pot bake and I have a video for that that I'm gonna link in this video in the upper right hand corner so tomatoes and saltfish it's something it's a very simple dish yet it's so flavorful and saltfish is actually one of our main ingredients back home in the Caribbean. It can be added to a lot of different vegetables and it really spruces up the flavor of whatever you put it into. So I'm going to share my version of this tomato and saltfish recipe. My dad is one of the best tomato and saltfish cooks. He makes it the best, I think. And when he makes it, I usually eat it with dal and rice. And for breakfast, we usually have it with pot bake or with fried bake. So if you guys want to see how I do this really simple yet delicious tomato and saltfish recipe, then keep watching. I also wanted to give a shout out to one of my fellow Trini YouTubers. Her name is Martina Jackson and her channel is called What to Cook. Go check her out. She has amazing Trinidad recipes and she's such a genuine and kind woman. She's so nice. I mean, you can tell how nice she is by how she speaks in her videos. So please go check her out, subscribe to her videos. She has amazing recipes. I actually want to try a few myself. Like she made this um, eggplant or bygone pie that I want to try out soon. So Martina, continue your amazing work and I will continue following you. So I'm gonna start off by making my dough first. And I'm gonna leave all the ingredients in the description box below or I'm gonna leave it on the screen it's going to be super imposed on the screen and if you're using your tablet or your phone it's not going to show up because unfortunately um, annotations don't work for phones so if you can't see it on the screen then just click the little arrow underneath and you'll see all the exact ingredients that I used so for this fried bake you're going to need flour, yeast, sugar, some Crisco cooking, some baking powder and some salt and some lukewarm water so we're gonna just add all the dry ingredients into the flour. So I'm gonna add the sugar, the baking powder and the salt and the yeast. And you're just gonna mix this together with your hands just to kind of incorporate all those ingredients into the flour. Now once that's mixed you want to add your Crisco or your cooking. And you can use butter in place of this or you can just use a little bit of oil. Just kind of crumble it in between the flour. Because the heat of your hands is going to melt it. So now I'm going to add my water a little at a time. Make sure that it's lukewarm because we're using yeast in this. And for the yeast to activate you'll need the warm water as well as the sugar. So I just kneaded my dough and you don't want it to be too soft or too hard. It has to be like a medium dough because for bakes you don't want your dough to be too soft. It could be a little on the hard side that's okay but you don't want it to be too soft. And the reason that I added yeast to this is because the yeast kind of puffs up the bake and it gets really nice and hollow on the inside and it's very easy to fill the bake with whatever you want. So usually when they make bacon shark, you would put yeast in the dough because you want it to puff up so you could fill the shark in there. So what I'm going to do now is just add a little bit of dried flour on top and I'm going to knead that in because I want the top of the dough to be really nice and smooth. So my dough is perfect now. What I'm going to do is put this in a warm place because we have yeast in here. So you want the yeast to kind of activate and you want the dough to rise a bit. So I'm just going to put mine in my microwave. That's where I like to put it because I don't really have any warm spots. To place it but if you live in a warm place then just leave it on your stove or somewhere where it could get the moisture so I'm gonna just cover this with a damp towel and I'm gonna place it in the microwave and we'll come back in about 
45 minutes to an hour and then we'll start making the bakes. Also to prevent the top of it from creating a crust, just take a little bit of oil and just kind of sap it onto the top of the dough. So now it's ready to go and sit in the microwave. So now these are the ingredients you'll need for the tomatoes and saltfish pot. And first up I have about 12 ounces of some salted cod or pollock and you want to get maybe a bag. A bag is usually about 11 or 12 ounces. And try to get the boneless one because if you get the one with the bone it's going to be a little harder to clean and you don't want to risk, you know, getting stuck in your throat with any bones. So if you do get the bone one however, you want to boil it first and then take the bones out. So what I did here is because the cod is dehydrated and it's salted to preserve it, I boiled it for about 15 to 20 minutes and I boiled it twice. And you want to boil it and throw the water away each time because it's very salty and you don't want the salt to kind of overpower the flavor of your food. So I just boiled it and I left it in large pieces because I'm going to fry mine separately first and then I'm gonna put it into the tomatoes and I have four tomatoes here you can use less tomatoes if you use less it would be saltfish with tomatoes if you use more tomatoes it'll just be tomatoes with saltfish and I also have garlic some pimento peppers hot pepper and some onion diced finely and pimento peppers if you can't find this where you live then you can just use any kind of mild pepper you have or you don't even have to use this pepper at all you can also use some saiba scallions chopped up as well. I'm just going to keep it simple. This is how my dad usually makes his saltfish and tomatoes. So I'm just going to show you guys how I like to do mine. So I'm actually going to fry the saltfish or the salted cod first. And you want to take some paper towel and kind of try to absorb all the excess liquid there. Because you don't want when you add this to the hot oil, it's going to pitch up on you. So once that's dried enough, I'm going to show you guys how to fry it. So once your saltfish has fried completely and it's gotten a really nice crispy coating on the outside and it's actually going to be crispy all the way throughout as well and this is how I love to do my saltfish for the saltfish and tomatoes because I find that when you shred it and then you add it to the oil in the pan to cook it I find that it stays too soft and it, it sticks to the pan as well so this is how we usually do it at home so I just wanted to share it with you guys. So just place it on some paper towels to drain and then we can go ahead and start kind of breaking them up because you want it to be in like some fairly small chunks. You don't want it to be too big. So kind of break it up into small pieces kind of like this and then I'm going to start making the saltfish and tomatoes. And this is how you want to cut your tomatoes. Cut it into strips kind of like this and just cut it into smaller pieces. So I've just put my pot up on medium heat and I'm just gonna add in about a half of a tablespoon of canola oil and once your oil is nice and hot go ahead and add in your onions and you just want to let this saute for about a minute. So once the onion is nice and fried and it's gotten a kind of translucent color Add in your garlic and I have a lot of garlic here and you want to add your pimento peppers and your hot pepper. So once that's sauteed for about a half of a minute go ahead and add in your tomatoes and I'm just gonna give you a little tip here if you're not gonna deep fry your saltfish before like I did then you can add a little more oil to your pan add your shredded saltfish stir fry it until it develops a nice crisp on the outside and then you can add your onions and your peppers and everything and saute it or you can just take the saltfish out you can chunk it which I just did and then you can add back the saltfish to it so it's up to you so I'm gonna just add my tomatoes in and just lower heat because we're gonna let this steam down 
Because tomato has such a high water content, we don't need to add any water to this. We're just gonna cover it. So leave your heat on low now and cover this and let it go for about, I would say 10 to 15 minutes and I'll come back and check it and then we'll add the salt fish in there. So our tomatoes have been simmering for about 10 minutes and it's gotten really nice and soft. So what you want to do now is add in your salt fish and I just couldn't help stealing some of this and eating it while I was waiting. I just love how it tastes when it's really crispy. And I know of some people, they fry salt fish and they keep it in Ziploc bags in their fridge. And every dish that they eat, they have to put a little bit of fried salt fish on the side. Because this goes so well with anything. So we're not going to add any salt or anything as yet. Because as you know, the salt fish is still very salty, even though we boiled it. So you just want to wait until this is finished. And then we can taste it. And what I like to do is just take my spoon and kind of mash the tomatoes because I like my tomatoes to be soft and if you want it chunky you can just leave it as is to keep it shape so I'm just gonna let this simmer for the next 10 minutes again or less and I will come back and we'll taste it for salt and it'll be done by that time so it's been another 10 minutes and it looks like it's completely reduced and it's at the perfect stage right now my tomatoes are really nice and mushy, but it still has a few chunky pieces in there. And I just tasted it and it needs a little bit of salt. So I'm just going to add a little bit. And it looks perfect. I think I'm going to turn this off now. And now I'm going to work on my fried bakes. So my dough has been sitting for about an hour now. And as you can see, it's kind of doubled in size. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you the two ways that I like to make bake. So firstly, I'm going to make it into small circles. And this way is usually the way that they would make bake and shock. So you can do these circles how small or how big you want. I'm just gonna do a few of those and then I also like to roll it out and cut it in four that's how I actually grew up eating it usually when you would make uh, tomatoes and salt fish this is how they usually give it to you in a kind of triangular shaped bake so I'm gonna roll this out first you're gonna roll it like how you would roll out roti So you don't want to roll it out too thin, roll it out to a good size where when it goes into the oil it's going to puff up because when it's too thin it's not going to puff up. So I like to just cut it into triangles, into four triangles. So I'm just going to lay these out onto a floured plate because I don't really have a lot of room to work with. So I'm just going to finish these up and then I'll fry them after. So now to do your bake for bake and shock. This is just really simple. It's just a small bake and you're just going to roll it out. So this looks like a good size. I'm going to finish these up. And I forgot to mention, before I started rolling these out, I actually put up some oil to heat up, to deep fry these in. So kind of put about a half pot of oil to heat up, a good sized pot that you can fit one of these in. And just let it heat up on medium heat, because you don't want it to be too hot. You want these to kind of cook on the inside. So put it on medium heat and then as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to go over and fry them. So once your oil is at the perfect temperature, we're going to go ahead and start adding our bakes. And you want to just have a plate with some paper towels lined on it so that when the bakes are finished, they can drain the excess oil. 
So I'm gonna add my bacon because my oil looks pretty hot. So I'm gonna start off with the triangle one. And as you can see, it's gonna get nice and puffed up. That's what I was talking about with the yeast. If you don't add the yeast, you really don't get a nice puffed bake. So you want these to kind of develop a nice color, like a nice golden brown color. So mine looks perfect now, I don't like mine too dark, so I'm going to take it off. And this is why they call it floats in Guyana, because Guyanese people usually add yeast to theirs. In Trinidad, we traditionally don't add yeast to ours. So the one with yeast is called floats, and without yeast is just fried bake. So I'm going to finish these up and I'll come back at the end and show you what they look like. So I've just finished up my bake and my saltfish and tomatoes has been sitting for a while so it's gotten a little bit cooler now. So I'm going to cut one of these open and show you how it looks on the inside. It's very hollow on the inside just so I like it. And if you have a piece of shark, you can just put it in there and it's not going to fall out. It creates a nice pocket for you to put whatever you want in there. So I'm going to put a little bit of my tomatoes with saltfish. And it's so nice and soft on the inside, but yet it's crispy on the outside. And that's just how I like it. So I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. This is one of my favorite dishes. Maybe everything is my favorite dish because I think I keep saying that. But I really love this and my dad he makes saltfish and tomatoes the best and my mom makes the best bakes. So I just wanted to share my version of this with you guys and I hope you enjoy it. Leave me your comments below, give the video a thumbs up if you like it and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my channel to see all the latest videos. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!